today. And so just as a reminder, um, the atom spectral sequence has a cohomological and a homological form. So these things look like X over the Steenrod algebra uh, with H star X to H star Y. And this converges uh, to the homotopy classes of maps from X to Y. Okay, and then maybe we have to two complete. Uh, and there's also a homological version, uh, which I'll use at some point. Uh, and so this goes from the homology of X and the homology of Y, and it converges to the same thing. So just so you know, there's a black box where I think, I think that's where your little zoom rectangle is. Oh God. Um, is it yeah. fixed now? Well, there's one on the right-hand side of the screen that's covering up your oh. completions right now. Um, yeah, okay. that, that's much better. Yeah, so I'm using, this was the other thing, but I think, Paul, you weren't here for me to say this, but my Windows, the hard drive with my Windows partition died. So I have to use Zoom from Linux right now, which is like extremely scuffed. I think it runs yeah. through Wine and like, it just doesn't really work well. Yeah, um, I've also had some problems with that. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, and so. Um, there's a question in the in the chat. Liam says the first E2 page is backwards. Yeah, sorry about that. I usually really only ever think about the homological version, so fair enough. Okay, uh, and so as with a lot of things in homotopy theory, uh, there is a difference between how like this thing is constructed and how like we actually work with it. So. I'm not really gonna do much with Adam's resolutions or anything like uh, Zach spent a lot of time talking about in the last talk. Um, rather the techniques for doing some of these computations are sort of indifferent to like the exact method of constructing the spectral sequence. And so I think like there's sort of two general approaches that I wanna outline. So, uh, so the first is to try to compute the E2 page or so methods to try to compute the E2 page. So this is like one class of techniques. Okay, and the second are uh, methods to, to compute uh, differentials. Okay, and so generally, like at least from my perspective, uh, the like first class of things is way nicer to think about. And the second class of stuff is like way more bespoke and like uh, computing all of these differentials is quite difficult. So actually like most of the things I'll talk about today are just methods to compute the E2 page. And then for basically every example we talk about, the E2 page will also be the E infinity page. So uh, there's like not much that will have to go on for the whole spectral sequence. The most of the work will be just in constructing uh, the E2 page. Okay, so before I actually do anything, one of the things I wanted to do is maybe outline like three sort of broad systematic ways of trying to do these things. Um, and then I'll use at least one of them later on when we're actually doing computations. So sort of the first way you could try to compute anything about the atom spectral sequence is the May spectral sequence. And these are not ordered in any like particular way. Okay, so this is a spectral sequence uh, that starts at uh, a similar looking group. So it's X over the associated graded of uh, the Steenrod algebra. So I'll say um, at least, yeah, the Steenrod algebra. Uh, actually, since I'll only ever work with the, homolog the homological one, I'll say the dual. Uh, and uh, so the homology of X, the homology of Y, uh, and this converges to the Adams E2 page. Okay, so how does the spectral sequence arise? Uh, it arises from a filtration, so it comes from a filtration. Uh, 
uh, of uh, the dual Steen rod algebra. Okay, but the filtration is kind of annoying in some sense because normally when you think about filtrations of commutative algebras like the Steen rod algebra, you would want to filter it by like modules or something. This filtration is kind of annoying. It's a filtration by uh, co-modules and uh, it, it comes, it arises from sort of a nice filtration on the Steenrod algebra. The, the filtration on the Steenrod algebra is just powers of the unit ideal. So what I mean by that is the Steenrod algebra is augmented. So there is a, a canonical map to F2, uh, which just kills all of the squares. And the filtration on the May spectral sequence is just powers of uh, the unit ideal, so the kernel of uh, the augmentation map. To get the filtration on the dual Steenrod algebra, you can sort of just dualize this. Another way to think about it is you take co-powers of the unit co-ideal, but that way of thinking about it has always confused me. Okay, but so the reason the, the May spectral sequence is nice is it has a particularly convenient E1 term. So the E1 term of the May spectral sequence is just polynomial. It's polynomial uh, in Hij, where i is uh, greater than one and j is greater than zero. And uh, these Hij's have sort of a, a, a nice interpretation. Hij corresponds to uh, sort of this element in the dual Steenrod algebra, z uh, i two to the j. Okay. Would and you mind so, saying a bit about the dual Steen right algebra since since we haven't talked about it at all? Uh, yeah. So, what should I say about the duals? So, uh, yeah. So the so like, what does it look like as a yeah example? yeah. So so it's usually written a lower star, and it's equal to um, h f two. Uh, smash over the sphere with HF2 or the, the homotopy groups of this thing. And uh, it has as a basis uh, these sorts of uh, ZIs. So, uh, and the like a relevant thing to note is uh, it's a, a co commutative. Hop algebra, but it is not commutative. And so, or, uh, sorry, it's a commutative Hopf algebra, but it is not co-commutative. Um, and so it's a commutative ring, which seems like it would make all of our lives quite a bit easier. But the problem is a lot of the structure that you actually want for doing like stable homotopy theory uh, doesn't come from the multiplicative structure. It comes from like the co-multiplicative structure on the Hopf algebra. So for example, like the one of the most important things about the Steenrod algebra are the ADEM relations. And the ADEM relations don't come in as sort of multiplicative relations in the dual Steenrod algebra. They factor in as uh, relations that the, the co-multiplication satisfies. So as a consequence of this, it's not really that relevant to consider like modules over the Steenrod algebra because the Steenrod algebra as just a commutative ring is just free on these generators, but, uh, or polynomial on these generators. But um, you wanna consider co-modules because the thing that encodes the ADEM relations is the, the co-action of the dual Steenrod algebra on, uh, on a module. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think I wanna say too much about uh, like various bases on the dual Steenrod algebra. These things, uh, I forget exactly what basis it's called, but these things are the linear duals of like uh, square, like two to the N square, or maybe I should say two to the I, two to the I minus one uh, square one. Uh, yeah, so. Okay. Paul, do you think I should say something more than this? About no, that's, that's great. This is very helpful. Thank you. OK, yeah. So maybe I'll like box this because it's kind of an aside. OK, yeah. So the, the main point about the May spectral sequence that I at least wanted to outline is that the E1 term is, is quite easy to analyze. And uh, you can sort of have a concrete model where you take the cobar complex of the dual Steenrod algebra and the filtration by co-powers of the unit co-ideal is compatible with the differential on the cobar complex. And so you can actually have like a very concrete way to compute low degree differentials. The observation that May made, which is why it actually turns out to be like a useful computational tool, is there's a smaller resolution that exists of, uh, of the 
there's a smaller resolution that computes this E1 page because the Cobar complex in high degree uh, blows up and it's like very difficult to compute with. Um, okay. Yeah, but so uh, this is one sort of technical tool one could use to approach the E2 page of, this, of the, the atom spectral sequence. The second thing I wanted to talk about very briefly is the lambda algebra, which I won't actually do a computation with, but I, I really do think this is like quite a cool thing. And it's like a nice computational way to attack the, the E2 page. So uh, one way to think about this is that the Steenrod algebra uh, can be written as uh, F2 uh, on the square eyes mod the ADEM relations. And an important observation about this is that the ADEM relations uh, only involve up to quadratic terms. Uh, and so there's a special name for this kind of algebra. So, uh, so it is a quadratic algebra. Um, and so all a quadratic algebra is, is it's a free algebra on some generators over F2 mod out by relations that only involve linear and quadratic terms. Um, and so uh, in work of pretty, uh, there's a lot of tools that were developed for doing things with qu quadratic algebras in, uh, in a little bit of generality. So one of the things you can do is you can talk about their Kozul duals. And so a star has, and I'll, I'll put a little star by the has, a Kozul dual, which I'll call lambda. And so I don't want to spend too much time talking about what this means, but uh, this dual Uh, is a differential graded algebra. And so it, it in particular has a, a differential. Okay. And uh, just this amazing property of this is that if you take homology of this differential graded algebra with respect to this differential, you get the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence, uh, which I'll just write as X. Uh, a uh, star F2, F2. Okay, and uh, pretty developed uh, just formulas for exactly what this differential ought to be in terms of the ADEM relations. And so there's a concrete description of the generators of the lambda algebra, and we know exactly what the differential is. And so you can actually just write like computer programs to compute the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence in terms of all of this. Now, I said I was lying a little bit when I said a star has a causal dual. Uh, you have to like homogenize uh, the Steenrod algebra first, but uh, it's sort of a, a side point. But uh, it's, it's an extremely tractable way to compute uh, big portions of the E2 page of, of the atom spectral sequence. And the differential is just literally like, you can write it using the coefficients of the, ADEM, the linear part of the ADEM relations. What do you mean by saying it has a causal dual? It's, it's yeah, so I mean, uh, by has a causal, I mean, um, so if you take the homogenization of the Steenrod algebra, it has a PBW basis. And so you can uh, you can identify uh, x a star if you homogenize it uh, f two f two uh, as the as a causal dual of this thing. Yeah. So the details aren't that important, but I just wanted to point out that there's a concrete model for like what you could call the E one page of the atom spectral sequence, where all of the details are built up in like a very computable way. And so there's details in uh, Ravenel's book, Complex Cobordism and the Homotopy Groups of Spheres. Um, and there's some, some nice details in other places. But uh, yeah, so I, I mostly just wanted to bring up the fact that if you wanted to think of like computing the, the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence, like literally algorithmically, uh, this is like a decent approach at least uh, to get some like low and medium degree parts of the E2 page. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to briefly say before doing an actual computation is there's a lot of modern stuff that's pretty exciting, which I will I'll call 
sort of like comparison techniques. Uh, Okay, and so what do I mean by this? I mean that uh, this sort of technique goes by developing an uh, alternate uh, stable homotopy theory. Uh, which uh, lifts the atom spectral sequence. So uh, notably, there's a lot of things uh, which goes by the name like the C tau philosophy um, by uh, Dan Isaacson uh, and collaborators. Uh, Uh, and there's some other work, uh, and this is lying a little bit because this isn't quite about the, the atom spectral sequence, but this is about um, uh, the atoms Novikov spectral sequence. But the point here is that there's some spectral sequence um, which maps down to the motivic atoms Novikov spectral sequence. Um, and it also maps down onto the traditional Adams Novikov spectral sequence. Uh, and this like is is kind of technical, but a lot of recent progress in computing differentials in the Adams spectral sequence has uh, been performed with with this sort of approach. So this is another thing I don't want to say too much about. But if you want to know about like really modern techniques for computing like the most state of the art differentials in these spectral sequences. Uh, this sort of stuff is like, at least to my knowledge, like the most state of the art uh, approach. Okay. Yeah, so now I actually wanna compute something um, instead of just giving like sort of like a, a general like vague overview of various approaches. Uh, and so to do that, I want to talk about something called the, the Miller change of rings theorem or uh, Miller's change of rings. Okay, so to start, uh, I'll make a definition that if uh, B and A, uh, or if A is a Hopf algebra uh, over F2, uh, and B is a sub Hopf algebra, then the quotient uh, A modded out by B is defined to be uh, A tensored over B with F2. Okay, so why is this the definition of a quotient of a Hopf algebra? One way to think about it is just with an example. So if A is uh, the exterior algebra on X and Y over F2 and B is just the exterior algebra on X, then what does this quotient look like? So if we take, uh, so the quotient is just this, uh, this like tensor algebra. So for example, we could look at the element X tensor one in A quotient and out by B. Now, since we're taking the tensor product over B, we can actually write this as one tensor X. But F2 as a, a module or a co-module over A uh, sets X equal to zero. It quotients out by X. So this whole thing is actually equal to zero. So this sort of funny way of defining quotients of hop algebras by this tensor product does what you would expect. And it sets all of the relevant generators of B equal to zero. Because the idea is you can sort of move them over the tensor product. And F2 will, will kill any non-trivial generator um, in B. Okay, so this is relevant for the, the Miller change of rings theorem. So, uh, but before I do that, I should give some examples of when this would come up. So uh, let me define AN 
a subhop algebra of the Steenrod algebra um, as uh, by uh, 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 as the sub hop algebra generated by uh, square uh, zero, square one, up to square two to the n, or not square. I guess, I mean, square zero is included, but yeah. And so with this definition, we have that the cohomology of KO is this Hopf algebra quotient, um, the Steenrod algebra modded out by uh, A1. And uh, the cohomology of TMF is the Steenrod algebra modded out by A2. OK, so very concrete descriptions of the cohomology of these two spectra in terms of the Steenrod algebra and these sort of sub Steen, the, or uh, these sort of sub hop algebras uh, in this quotient. OK, I think this is like really cool, but it becomes even more useful with the following theorem. OK, so let B inside of A be hop algebras over F2, then we have an equality of these x groups. So x over A uh, of M with coefficients in A tensor over B with N. This is equal to X over B M tensor over A with B N. Okay, so M is an A modular co-module and B is uh, in uh, an A modular co-module. I'm being kind of vague as to like exactly whether these things are modules or co-modules on purpose. Um, but so like this looks kind of confusing, right? I mean, like just kind of like kind of like garbage. Um, but if we specialize to one of these previous cases, then uh, if we have M and N both equal to F2, and we have B equal to A1 and A equal to the Steenrod algebra, then what do we recover? We recover that X of, uh, over the Steenrod algebra of F2 uh, with coefficients in the Steenrod algebra modded out by A1 is isomorphic to x over this smaller, much smaller uh, Hopf algebra with coefficients in F2 and now with coefficients in F2. Okay, so concretely, what is the said? The left Sorry, hand- I, I have a question. Um, on, yeah. on the right hand side of your, of your formula, uh, you have B is an algebra over A. Yes. Right? How is that? What is, what is that mean? Uh, is it ideal or something? Sorry, let me think. B is an algebra of A. Yeah, M tensor over A, B. Is B a hop ideal or something? Uh, yeah, I. so we might need more adjectives here. Well, I don't, I don't think A1 is an ideal of, um, of A. Um, let me think. Uh, is this, is you this supposed like to? No. I'm trying to remember how this is supposed, it's supposed so to So the, the change of rings theorem always really confuses me because it's written in like a million yeah. different ways. So I tried to like extract yeah, the yeah. simplest version from like the appendix of Rabinel. Um, yeah. Um, um, could you take M as an A module? So you're, you're doing X of modules, right? Yeah. So if, if M is an A module, you can regard it as a B module by, yeah. by restricting along the inclusion. And, and that might be what I mean. So there's some confusion. Yeah, that does give you the application. Yeah, so there, there's you're... some confusion here about the like most general form. Maybe it's just M like along the restriction. Um, yeah, this stuff really confuses me because people only write it down like in really like general forms, I feel like, which is not very helpful for like this specific application. Um, okay, but 
So let's use this and immediately do a computation with it because this tells us that uh, the E2 page of uh, an atom spectral sequence, we can actually compute as uh, uh, this sort of smaller X group. Or, and by smaller, I mean that this thing has significantly fewer generators. It has two generators, square zero and or, uh, square one and square two. Hey, Jacob, can I ask another question? I'm kind of, yeah. I'm, I think I'm also turned around by like the, the, the functoriality, right, left handedness of everything. So it should the a a should the a star like mod a1 be on the left hand side or the right hand side so this this was something i realized as i was writing it i so i secretly because while i was writing this i kept switching between like wanting to do things in terms of cohomology and homology so and so uh, this would need to change but so this is really what i want <clears throat> And then, um, and then I think the statement is better, or might address some of your confusions. Or is that not what you were confused about? No, I, I think I was confused about the same thing as what happened. Like the the E two page, right? It like flips the x and the y, like like it flips the x and the y. Right? Yeah, that's like, that's why I'm saying I want to work with homology now. Right. Right. Okay. But, yeah, that's would this statement with this particular statement like cohomologically like like does the change rings theorem hold cohomologically as well as homologically? I, I I think it should, but in the appendix of Ravenel, where I got this from, Ravenel is talking about co-modules, um, and so like explicitly only working with like the homological version of like everything. Um, yeah, I agree. Like this stuff is very confusing to me too. Um, so I guess part of what's going on, which is maybe not totally trivial, is that a a tensored over b with n is a co-module. Um, yeah. This is a, or there's some there's some way of taking a co-module over b and and extending it to get a co-module over a. Um, yeah. Which I think, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that's the right formula for it, but I but I, there is a formula for it. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Um, well. Okay. So at least if if we put some questions by the theorem, um, because this I guess like this really isn't the important part yet. The important part is actually doing like a computation. the The example application is true. Um, so depending on the exact details in the theorem of how you get there, um, then we can maybe accept that. Yeah, let's let's roll with the with the example and okay. figure out the theorem later. Cool. So if we want to compute uh, the so the, the goal now is to compute the homotopy groups of KO. Okay. And so uh, so to start, we want the E two page of the atom spectral sequence. Okay, but the previous example says that, uh, so uh, this is equal to uh, x over the smaller Hopf algebra of F2 with F2. Okay, so Sorry, why is- uh, Is this like capital KO or lowercase? Uh, this is lowercase, sorry. Maybe I should make that slightly more clear. Um, yeah, this is lowercase ko. Um, yeah, all of the, like the two examples I gave on the previous page of ko and tmf, all of those letters were lowercase um, everywhere. Um, okay, yeah, so there's like a variety of ways to do this. And uh, like, so there's a way in, in Ravenel which relies on some like black box computations. And uh, there's another way which uh, I first read about in some notes of, of Catherine Ray uh, that I really like that uses the May spectral sequence. Um, and so I want to go through with this because I feel like it, it really shows like a nice way of uh, like using the different like using the differentials to cut down on what is possible in the in the in the spectral sequence. And it's it's tractable because there aren't that many generators. Okay, so if we wanted to do this, then we should figure out what the E1 page is. So 
uh, we will compute uh, the atoms E2 with the May spectral sequence. OK, and so if you remember back, I gave a description of what the E1 page of the atoms or the May spectral sequence is. We're using a slightly different base now because we're using A1 instead of the whole Steen run algebra. But this is actually significantly nicer because it cuts down on the possible generators in the E1 page. And it turns out that this is just equal to F2 of uh, H10, H11, uh, H20. OK, so there's only three generators of the, the E1 page. And they live in the following degrees. So the degree of uh, H10 is uh, 0, 1, 1. The degree of H11 is 1, 1, 1. And the degree of H20 is uh, 2, 1, 1. And I'm writing this in T minus S, uh, S U coordinates. Yeah, this is something I forgot to mention. The, the May spectral sequence is actually tri-graded, but we'll essentially uh, ignore one of the three gradings when we draw all of these charts. We'll ignore the, the S grading and only talk about the T minus S and the U gradings. OK, so if we start to draw what this looks like, we'll end up with something like this. OK, so we have this element 1. And then we have uh, H10. H10 squared. OK, and that continues. Then we have H11. And so this is, sorry, this is T minus S and this is U. Uh, and we have H11. OK, and this continues. And then we have H20. H20 squared. OK, then on top of each of these things, we have H0 towers. We have H1 towers. Off of here, there should be H2 terms coming off. So there's quite a bit of mess on the E1 page. It's, it's, it's enormous. But uh, there's only one differential. And the differential cuts down all of the garbage kind of immediately. So this differential is D1 of uh, H20 is um, H1, 0, H11. One, one. I think we, we might have talked about this last time, actually. Um, and this is the, the first differential in the May spectral sequence. So if we. Can I ask a dumb question? Yeah. Uh, can you do this? Can you plot it like this, essentially, because the, t, the top of like the TS, T minus S degree, like takes care of both T and S simultaneously? Like, or. Uh, the reason I'm plotting it like this is if you notice, like, S is constant here like s doesn't change for any of these things okay that that makes sense yeah well uh so when you multiply them s is going up in in degree but like uh yeah this is kind of a, a usual way of, of plotting it um it is a little confusing i think but we're only going to have like one generator and each like t minus s u coordinate ever. So there's like, is generally like not much confusion about like this third dimension, like coming out of the page. Okay. So S is equal to U for everything that's, that's on your page, right? Yeah, that's true. That's additional. Yeah. That's it. That's okay. a way better way of saying it. <laughs> but that's not, but, but this is not true in general for like, if you did the May spectral sequence for the sphere. Or yeah. Something, then, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So there's can you flip back to the previous page again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can, can I add something? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. If, if people prefer to think about the steam rod algebra rather than the dual steam rod algebra, I think that these, these things are dual to square one, square two, and square two, square one, which, yeah. which are all elements of A1. Uh, OK. Liam, are you, are you good now? Yeah, I'm good. OK, perfect. So let's like look at what this differential will kill. So first of all, H20. So I don't normally do this, uh, use the highlighter. So let's see how this works. So H20 is, is, now, is now dead. Additionally, H, uh, H12 
uh, one zero h one one is is dead. So this whole column of values is dead, and so all of these uh, are no longer uh, all of these no longer exist. Um, and so what we're left with is the following picture. Sorry, I'm just trying to make room. So we still have this H0 tower at the beginning. OK, and then we have uh, this copy of H1, uh, H11. OK, but we no longer have H20. What we have is we have H20 squared. So this should be uh, right here. Um, so 4 over so 1, 2, 3, 4. So maybe like. Uh, right here. OK, and so this has an H0 tower coming off of it. Um, and this has a copy of H11 coming off of it. Uh, and then additionally, we have, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Um, Uh, oh, yeah. We just have it repeated over here. Okay. So, so this is the E2 page now. And once again, there's only one differential. And I'm sort of just black boxing. I'm like telling you what the differential is. But each of these are reasonably straightforward to compute. The first one, you can compute in the Cobar complex. The second one, you can compute in a variety of ways. I think there's an approach using Nakamura's lemma and the algebraic Steenrod squares, which is quite nice. But the point is, uh, we have a D2 differential that D2 of H20 squared uh, is non-zero. It's equal to H1 cubed, H10 cubed. OK, so what does this look like? So I think you mean H11 cubed. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, this differential goes from here to here. So uh, what's eliminated now? So this is eliminated. Uh, this is eliminated. In addition to all of the things, oh, I guess the the H zero tower was already gone. Um, uh, but yeah, so if you wanted to like extend this and see what what really is getting eliminated, so there's all of these H H uh, ones that are coming off of here, and if you propagate the differential, you're getting cancellation of this whole kind of ladder. Uh, that continues periodically. And so this is the only D2 differential. So all of that gets eliminated. OK, so there are no more differentials in the spectral sequence uh, for degree reasons, which I can talk about in a moment. But let's draw like the final E3 page and see what we actually get and use that to compute uh, the, the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence for KO. OK, so once again, let's, let's draw this. So T minus S, U. So uh, I want a little bit more space now to hopefully fit everything in. So we still have this tower of uh, H10. Then we have this, but it only continues out uh, twice now because the third time was killed by the D2 differential. OK, then normally we would have something like right here, uh, but that was also killed by the differential. So it starts here. And there's no sort of like y equals x diagonal line coming off of it that would be here because this whole ladder was killed by the D2 differential. OK, but uh, we do have this, uh, which is like H20 cubed, uh, like it's the same sort of thing that's, that's happening. And then finally, uh, we have one more of these linear towers. Um, because this is like the base of this would have started at uh, h20 uh, to the fourth. So the base was killed along with like the y equals x from the differential. Um, and so this is what we get. So let's try to write down what these homotopy groups should be. And I should be a little careful. Um, so I should tell you like how many spaces there are between these things. So uh, this is 0, 1, 
two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, um, then eight. So these are these are the indices. And so for clarity, like and uh oh I meant to I should have said this earlier, but the reason this like T minus S uh convention is used usually for the atom spectral sequence, but also the May spectral sequence is that it means that the columns in the, on the pages assemble to become the actual homotopy groups. Um, so you don't have to like do anything fancy besides like thinking about these sort of extension problems. Um, it's just, you look at what groups are in a vertical column and this will tell you the homotopy groups. So this is now the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence. So it's the E infinity page of the May spectral sequence, but also the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence. And it turns out for degree reasons, there also aren't any atoms differentials. So this is the E infinity page of the atom spectral sequence. So we can actually just read off the columns and compute what the homotopy groups of KO are. So pi zero of KO is, uh, Maybe I should do it. Uh, well, yeah. I was trying to think of how to do this in kind of a nice way. Um, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. OK, so in column 0, we just have an infinite tower of these dots. Each dot is a copy of Z mod 2. And so when we have an infinite tower like this, these assemble into the two addicts. Uh, so in column 1, we just have one copy of Z mod 2. So there's no sort of funny business about extensions. Same thing in the second spot. In the third spot, there's nothing in the column. So we get 0. In the fourth spot, we have another one of these infinite towers. So we get Z2 hat. In the fifth spot, zero. In the sixth spot, zero. And in the seventh spot, zero. OK? And then uh, everything else is, is periodic after this, uh, which you can see if you, like, if you continue drawing the spectral sequence and we're more careful about canceling these differentials. So just from like looking at this, what we've recovered is, is real bot periodicity. I mean, this isn't like a proof. Um, but it's shown in this table. If you continued writing this out, so you did eight, nine, whatever, this pattern would continue. Uh, and so this is the, the eightfold periodicity in the homotopy groups of KO. Uh, and this pattern in the, in the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence would continue, uh, where it repeats with these sort of like open triangles and then vertical lines. Um, so this is, kind of, this is a particularly nice example because we only had to compute two differentials at any point in the, the atom spectral sequence was quite simple. Um, yeah, so using this, we could also actually like write down uh, a more precise description of the homotopy groups if we wanted to. Um, so if we call this two and we call this eta, then, uh, and we call this alpha and we call this beta. And so this would become uh, alpha beta. Then we should figure out like, what do we have to kill? Um, Uh, to make the the sort of E infinity page line up with uh, a presentation. So uh, maybe if I start like explaining what I mean here, it will help. So if you notice, we can have eta, we can have eta squared, but we can't have eta cubed. So we have to kill eta cubed because that was the target of the, the D1 differential, okay? What else can't we have? Well, we can't have two times eta because there was no uh, tower coming, there's no uh, tower coming off here. We additionally, we can't have alpha times eta because that was killed by the D2 differential. It was the source of a non-trivial D2 differential. OK, and then there's one sort of like funky thing, um, which is that we can't have alpha squared minus 4 beta. And so the reason we're not allowed to have this in a presentation, or, or 
like we, we would have to kill this in order to, to generate a presentation of these homotopy groups is that if you think about where this is going, so we have uh, alpha squared, this would land somewhere, uh, this would land here. So that this should be like alpha squared, but this is also four times beta because it's it's like two dots above beta, but it's also what you get if you just continue out if you square alpha, but there's only one dot there. So it means it only has one generator. So we have to pick one. And so we do that just by killing the difference between these two things. And so this is all of the, the modifications we would have to do. So actually, if I sort of shift this once again, because I didn't plan the location of it very well, um, we know that the homotopy, the, at least the, the two completed homotopy groups of KO are, uh, Z2 completed, adjoin uh, eta, alpha, and beta mod these things that we just got by looking at the, the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence. And this is the, these are the homotopy groups of KO. Okay, sorry, I see that there's stuff in the chat. Let me... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is a great example because the differentials are like not super complicated and it, it shows like how to build up the, the actual presentation of the, the homotopy groups just by looking at the E2 page. And of course, like uh, you have to be more careful if you actually want to say that this is like the algebra structure or whatever, but this is maybe like a heuristic way of seeing it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have five minutes left, but I, I want to do like one more computation. Um, we started like... 10 minutes later so so you should if you want to take more time you should take more time okay sweet uh if i can take more time do people have questions about this then that i can answer before moving on yeah what would you have to do to carefully figure out the multiplicative structure uh i'm not sure to, to be honest maybe someone else can answer i i just know that like the thing i did is not like a proof of that like the ring presentation of the homotopy groups of ko is this um also one thing i should say is that this is a circular argument because we needed to know the homology groups of ko in order to do this argument um but the like i think as far as i'm aware all of the proofs that compute the homology groups of ko use the homotopy groups of ko as input so this is kind of circular but it's like uh at least like a nice example of showing how to how to like use these tools so uh, about the multiplicative structure the both the may spectral sequence and the out spectral sequence are multiplicative um and the nice thing about this sort of argument is you have these very explicit like uh representatives for the homotopy classes that you're talking about in the Cobar complex, for example. And so you can check, like, I think the, the hardest relation to check here is the ace alpha squared is four beta, um, but you can check that just by looking at the co-cycle. Okay, so you literally can just do this using the, okay, yeah. right, great. I, I was wondering, like, yeah, I was, I was wondering if there was something secret that you needed to, that you needed to know. No, right. no, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, there, uh, there oh yeah. Here that let you pass from from the two completion back up to the full homotopy groups. So do you just have to do this one prime at a time? Or? Um, I'm not sure actually. Um, yeah. So one of the thing I think we mentioned the fact that two com that if you invert two ko ko with two inverted. Um, or sorry, KU with two inverted splits as two copies of KO. Um, so if you do some other computation for KU, then you can you can show that there's no torsion at other primes than two, and and then do one of these like fracture square arguments. I don't know. We can talk more about that afterwards if you all want. Cool. Yeah. So um, let's do another computation, which is a little um like involves less writing maybe so let's compute the homotopy groups of mo now okay so similarly to the last one where we took as input a description of the homology groups of ko as like this hop algebra quotient i'm going to take as input uh a computation of the homology groups of mo so the theorem is that the homology groups of mo are the dual steenrod algebra tensor this thing n 
where uh, n has a polynomial generator. in uh, all degrees, all, uh, all positive, except um, 2k minus 1. Uh, yeah. It might not be all positive. I think it is, though. OK, well, so. Uh, a thing to note here is that uh, this is like a nice description because this sort of way of writing it says that as a co-module, H star of MO is uh, co-free, which is like kind of a, maybe an intimidating term, but this just means that there's an adjunction between F2 modules and uh, a star co-modules, where the right adjoint is you uh, take a star and you tensor it with the F2 vector space. Then over here, you just forget the additional structure. OK. And so uh, why is this so nice? This is nice because co-free co-modules satisfy this property that x uh, of f2 comma a star tensor n is 0 if s is greater than 0. So the higher x groups will vanish. Um, so in particular, there's no higher x groups uh, that would participate in this, in this atom spectral sequence. OK, so, so this is quite nice because it means we only have to compute x to 0. So we only have to compute x0 of uh, f2 with coefficients in uh, a star tensor, this polynomial ring n uh, over uh, the dual Steenrod algebra. OK, but x0 is just kind of a fancy name for Hom. And I mentioned the fact that there was an adjunction earlier, because this allows us to, to write this Hom group as f2 linear homomorphisms from f2. So here, the left adjoint is just forgetting the co-module structure. So we're just thinking of f2 as a vector space over itself now. Uh, with coefficients in n or maps into n. OK, but this thing is uh, like not so fancy. Uh, it's just n itself. OK, so uh, what do we get here? Well, there's just it's not possible for there to be any differentials on the E2 page of the atom spectral sequence, or on any page, rather. So we get that pi star uh, of MO, or at least the, the two completed homotopy groups uh, are uh, n, which, remember, is just polynomial uh, on uh, infinite generators. And so there's one for like every natural number, except it misses 2k minus 1. OK, so this is like, I don't know, this argument kind of feels like cheating because like the most important thing was the input of the homology groups. But it is kind of nice that like because of all of these formal things with the atom spectral sequence, once you know the homology groups, you just know like the homotopy groups essentially for free because of all of these like formal properties with uh, X in the atom spectral sequence. Uh, so I don't know, I kind of like stuff like this because it's like an e or a reasonably like compared to other atom spectral sequence computations, like reasonably easy to remember like thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like the most easy thing to remember, probably, but uh, at least compared to like something else. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, and then at the end, I was going to do a similar computation for MU, but the, the computation for MU is a little more sophisticated and uses the, the change of rings theorem again. So it involves a little bit more work. So um, I don't really want to keep everyone here for like another 15 minutes or so. Um, so I, I can give details about that if people are interested, but otherwise I think um, maybe stopping here is okay.
Okay, let's uh, give Jacob a round of applause.